The International Olympic Committee recently hosted the Olympic Virtual Series, a competition featuring five events that sort of resemble video games. However, instead of showcasing the best talents from esports like League of Legends, Overwatch, and Counter-Strike, the events used games that mirrored traditional sports, and we're not talking about Madden or NBA 2K. Over the course of the event, players competed in virtual cycling, sailing, and rowing. This, apparently, is the IOC's response to the rapid growth of esports and the global embrace of gaming. To be honest, it was always a long shot for competitive video games to become an official part of the Olympics, but now the IOC has made it clear that the esports we know and love won't be a part of their plans, at least in the foreseeable future. But the situation wasn't always quite this hopeless. For years, many in the esports community held out hope that the leaders of the IOC would be convinced that esports belonged in the world's most prominent celebration of international competition. In 2017, at the 6th Olympic Summit, organizers discussed the development of esports and whether it could be included as a future event. Given how many in the sporting world were still dismissive of esports as a whole, the notes from the session were surprisingly encouraging. The summit acknowledged that esports should be considered a sporting activity that requires training similar to that of traditional sports, and put together a commission tasked with discussing esports with gaming industry stakeholders. At the time, it seemed like the IOC was actually considering the inclusion of esports in the Olympics. However, this is where we also see the first signs of major roadblocks. The summit noted that esports could not infringe on Olympic values and must have an organization that can guarantee compliance with Olympic rules and regulations. Unsurprisingly, for anyone who plays video games, these two things are next to impossible since there isn't one representative body that oversees every esports title. As well, the violent nature of certain titles wouldn't translate to a more formal Olympic stage. In 2018, the IOC convened once again for another summit, this time bringing together a number of prominent figures from the esports world together, along with IOC president Thomas Bach. At the time, there was even more hope in the air as an international StarCraft event, IEM Pyeongchang, was held in connection with that year's Winter Olympics. It seemed like things were moving in the right direction. However, the esports community wasn't ready for the brick wall that was Thomas Bach. Despite figures from major publishers like Riot Games as well as pro Overwatch player Jake Lyon speaking eloquently and passionately about the value of esports competition, he seemed fixated on the notion that major esports titles revolved around violence. While there are plenty of Olympic sports that are rooted in combat, from shooting to fencing to martial arts, multiple interviews and press releases following the summit made it clear that the notion of any game involving killing was absolutely unacceptable. This precedent would eliminate the possibility of something like CSGO ever being greenlit. But one could make the case that fighting games like Street Fighter or a title like Rocket League which has no violence at all could be viable for the Olympics. But of course, there were a few other concerns. The most valid of these is the fact that publishers control every esport, a problem that the industry itself is still struggling with. Olympic sports are operated by federations and national organizations that don't have an ownership stake in the very concept of the sport they're trying to play. Game publishers, on the other hand, do. The IOC also noted a lack of active women's disciplines for most major esports, another problem the esports industry needs to do more to solve before any inclusion in the Olympics can even be considered. But the big problem is that esports aren't that interesting to the core viewing audience of the Olympics. But we'll come back to this one later. In 2019, any hopes of being included in the Olympics were dealt a major blow. At the 2019 summit, the IOC declared in no uncertain terms that it wasn't ready to support any video games not directly based on traditional sports. The organizers would continue to push even further in this direction, praising technology that made video games more physical and able to more closely resemble their real-life counterparts. This was further emphasized in the IOC's 2020 plus 5 agenda, a roadmap for its goals and objectives over the next five years. In it, the IOC says that it recognizes the importance of working with the gaming industry, but should do so in order to get kids more interested in real sports. And this won't be changing anytime soon. In early June, IOC sport director Kit McConnell made it clear that the committee will remain, quote, a sport-based and sport-focused organization and that the Olympic Virtual Series will stay focused on sports titles. So now that we're here, and the IOC clearly took no feedback or direction from its discussion with the esports world, it begs the question. 
If the IOC has no real interest in adding esports to its summer or winter games, why go through the motions of talking to figureheads and investing into things that no one in the esports world would care about? Things like virtual rowing. Obviously, the Olympic strategy isn't going to do anything to bring in viewers for League of Legends or Overwatch. A few years ago, it might have been crushing to the esports industry to see the IOC take such a misguided approach to incorporating esports into their events. But the reality is that esports just doesn't really need the Olympics for credibility anymore. While the COVID-19 pandemic has set back in-person events across the world, some esports have managed to thrive in an online environment. Esports was already moving into the mainstream at a blistering pace, and the pandemic brought even more eyes to the gaming world than ever before. Other similar competitions are already acknowledging the need for a real esports affiliation. The Southeast Asian Games later this year will feature 10 esports disciplines, including both men's and women's Wild Rift. The IOC has even recognized the need for a streaming plan, with NBC and Twitch teaming up for coverage of this summer's Olympic Games. Although NBC will mostly be covering American athletes, broadcasting on Twitch gives viewers an opportunity to get closer to the action than ever before. Another example of bridging real sports and esports can be found in an unlikely streamer, Tyler1, who is hosting a powerlifting competition on Twitch Rivals as just another example of traditional sports entering the gaming sphere. But the bottom line is whether esports should be included in the Olympics. Would being in the Olympics help esports grow? Sure. Will we get there just fine without it? Absolutely. Whatever happens, the gaming industry isn't the same group that went to a summit in 2018 to plead their case. Esports is now a thriving, multi-billion dollar industry that is going to survive just fine without the Olympics. Either the IOC can accept that esports is going to continue to operate the way it wants to, or, I guess, they can keep hoping that people will get really, really into virtual rowing. What are your thoughts on esports and the Olympics? Should games like Counter-Strike and Rocket League be on the main stage? Or should we just keep doing our thing and growing exponentially? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, QB, David, Foxy, Iron, Lyra, Mav, Nate, Nathan, Sierra, Shampoo, Weeaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, and Mookie for being Diamond supporters. And an extra, extra special shout out to Fool from The Art of Warfare for being our Grand Master supporter. Thank you so much guys, we really appreciate it. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.